Hello and welcome. In this example, I want to show you how to use Descartes rule of signs in order to determine the number of possible positive zeros and the number of possible negative zeros in our polynomial. So for this one, I have a 3x to the fifth minus 4x squared plus x minus 3. Now the key for using Descartes rule of signs is really to just count up the number of sign changes in the polynomial. Now if any of your terms do not have a sign, like this first guy here, we can give it a positive sign. All right, so let's go ahead and count the number of sign changes. Looks like it goes from positive to negative. So there's one sign change. And it goes from negative to positive. There's two sign changes. And it looks like finally it goes from positive to negative. So three sign changes. Now what this tells me about my possible positive zeros is that I might actually have three possible positive zeros. Now, it might not actually be three. It could be less than three, but if it is less than three, it's less than that by an even number. So think of taking three and dropping it down by two. So if it's not three, maybe there's just one possible positive zero. Not too bad, all right? Now, in order to determine the number of possible negative zeros, we don't want to look at f of x, we want to look at f of negative x. So imagine plugging in a negative x for all your x's and then simplify it just a little bit. So negative x to the fifth minus a four negative x squared plus a negative x and minus three. There we go. Now anytime you take one of these negative x's to an odd power, uh, the negative sign will move out front, and if you take a negative x to an even power, that sign will go away entirely. So let's see what we have. So negative x to the fifth will be a minus 3x to the fifth. So I've moved that negative sign right out front. Uh, negative x squared, well that negative sign is gone. This negative sign was actually already there. Let's see, minus x and minus 3. All right, not too bad. So now when you go to count the sign changes here, looks like it stays negative the entire time. So it actually never changes in this one. Well, that gives us a little bit of information about the possible negative zeros. It says that there's basically none or zero. All right, and there you go. So remember that when you're looking for the possible positive zeros, look at the sign changes in the original. When looking at the possible negative zeros, count the sign changes in f of negative x. All right? If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.